Um, thank you all for being here. Um, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on Jara, the land of the Jarjarwurrung people. I pay my respects to Jara elders, past, present, and emerging, and also underscore the fact that this is Reconciliation Week, um, an incredibly important week where it's an opportunity to uh, profile and raise the voices of First Nations people, not only this week, but every week. Um, my name's Amelia Wallen. I'm the curator here at La Trobe Art Institute. It's my pleasure to welcome you for our afternoon sessions. Um, I'd also just like to thank Amy and Karen for their incredible organising of this event. And our panel discussion today is on a topic that's very dear to me, self-organising and creating spaces. It's something I'm incredibly passionate about and I'm so thrilled to be joined by three amazing panellists who are going to speak from very different perspectives on how they have worked to create space and their experiences of self-organising. And because this is a presentation geared towards artists, um, we invite your feedback and your questions should you wish to uh, initiate your own space, initiate your own... Um, projects, uh, whether it's a pop-up space or a more permanent space. Um, this is a panel that is really about how artists support artists, uh, something that I, I really am thrilled to be sharing with you all. So I'm going to introduce our panellists. Um, they're each going to speak for a few minutes um, and then we'll have some questions together before we open up the floor for further questions. So I have chris -Ann uh, Blenna Hassett, just next to me, and Chrisanne is a printmaker and a member of Castlemaine Press, so local participant. Um, Castlemaine Press is a community access printmaking studio set in the beautiful grounds of Lot 19 in Castlemaine, Victoria. If you haven't been to Lot 19, it's truly incredible. I think it's really one of a kind um, kind of space, not just in Victoria, but I would say in Australia well worth a visit. Um, then next we have Joanna Kiddo, who is the director of West Space. And Joanna is an arts leader, a curator and a writer uh, with an interest in generating meaningful connections between art, artists and audience. West Space is an organisation that just turned 30. I think Joanna will speak about that, um, but it's an incredible legacy um, that Joanna is leading. And please, if you haven't visited West Space, do. Um, always an incredible program that is really centred towards artists. And next we have Jack Hache, who is an artist and a founding member of Rookie, Ari, here in Bendigo. Rookie is a student-led artist-run initiative supported by La Trobe University and the City of Greater Bendigo. And I was lucky enough to be sort of parallel um, when Jack and the other students were initiating Rookie and I witnessed sort of third-hand the incredible amount of work and advocacy that went into forming a space like that in Bendigo. Maybe the first Ari in Bendigo? Dispute it. There have been others. So, yeah, the only one currently. Um, yeah, incredible feat, um, a lot, involving a lot of negotiation with council and an incredible uh, position now on um, the mall in Bendigo. So, what an amazing achievement. Congratulations. Um, let's hear a little bit more from our panellists. Chris Ann, would you like to take it away? Um, I completed my Bachelor of Arts degree at La Trobe six years ago. Um, the degree actually took me eight years to do, so it was a, it was a lovely slow process. Uh, my creative practice is varied, but printmaking became my preferred method of work. My practice in the arts has been a lifelong pursuit. I grew up in Eltham, northeast of Melbourne, in a fiercely artistic community. My mum was a potter and both of my parents encouraged a diverse and curious inquiry into both nature and the arts. It was, quite, it was quite late when I came to my visual arts degree and the terrific thing about this was that I already had some idea of what I wanted to achieve and wasted no time in experimental research. The university was a great place to play with a diverse range of mediums and concurrently, I was witness to my colleagues pursuing their own creative inquiry. This collegiality expanded the learning experience as we shared ideas, uh, successes, failures, processes and skills. Backtracking for a moment, I'd like to share a story of, of uh, you know, that's personal to me, but I believe may be of importance. When I was about 18 years of age, I caught the train into Melbourne 
to see an exhibition at the National Gallery. A series of dark etchings, sketchings, sketches and paintings, there were works by a group of artists including William Blake, Fusali and Goya, caught my attention. The Poetical Circle was the name of the show and the way in which I was so deeply moved by these works has never quite left me. Being so removed from the works I had previously appreciated, it occurred to me that there was something intensely deeper going on within these images. This was a subterranean dive into this dark and expressive graphic work which I realised I hungered to explore. After some early explorations with other art mediums at the uni, I had a semester of classes with Tim Jones. He took the drawing class downstairs to the print room. Here Tim presented a folio of his own work, a series of intimate black and white woodcuts prints based on the poetry of Dylan Thomas. I was immediately transported back to the NGV. In that moment of realisation, I was re-experiencing the encounter, encounter with those images all those years before, where I had found a deep connection and my relationship with this medium has remained strong ever since. As emerging artists, I would suggest that this is of significance, whether you're in or out of uni or study. Experiment creatively until you find the medium or the work that really catches and enchants you. Then dive in, go hard and seek out others because their thoughts, support and experience is so valuable. If you can find a process that can carry the essence of your message, then follow it and be rewarded creatively with a lifetime of deep satisfaction and artistic purpose. Having this thing that you can always return to and find wonder in is both cathartic and meaningful. A life raft, really. After completing my degree, I knew that printmaking was the medium I was chasing. This, of course, will be different for everyone, depending on the creative narrative that you want to write for yourself. For me, my circumstances had changed. My kids had all moved to Melbourne to chase their own careers. So I moved south to a creative print community. I found a house to live in that had a building that could be transformed into a studio and secured a press. If you're dreaming of a world that has creativity as its central focus, uh, and that's for you, then work towards making that dream a reality with practical engagement in art communities and seek out those with like-minded ideas. Establish networks and engage with local practising artists and Newstead has hundreds of practising artists. I made inquiries with the local Arts Open Collective and have continued to participate in that for the last six years. When time permits, I help out at the Newstead Arts Hub. That's a reconverted railway station that is a central community for creatives. And I also assist with social media um, and anything I can do for the newly opened Red Shed and that's uh, an artist community at the Railway Goods Shed that's just been converted by uh, VicTrack. All of these engagements stimulate creative discussion and further possibilities and opportunities in the local arts ecosystem. After becoming established in the local scene, I felt ready to commit to a more permanent and committed role with Castlemaine Press and was looking forward to engaging with a vibrant and dynamic group of printmakers. I volunteered as a committee member two years ago and have remained such ever since. So gradually, as you engage with local artists and communities, you can build a framework of creative structure around yourself, and this stimulates artful living and feeds directly into your own creative practice. Thank you so much, Chrisanne, for sharing not only your kind of personal trajectory, but also this message of seeking out creative spaces wherever they might be. And sometimes you do have to look further for them, especially if you're outside of epicenters. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, Joanna, I'm going to pass the mic to you. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to start by acknowledging the Jajagwarung people whose land we have the privilege of meeting on today. I always think about um, the fact that we are on unceded land that belongs to um, the longest continuing culture of oral storytelling on the planet and especially in the creative um, sector we are 
kind of continuing that here in Australia and the way that we um, tell stories through art and, um, you know, look at art together, experience art together and talk about it. Um, it's always in my mind. Um, so, oh yeah, I'll get to that in a second, um, uh, which is, you're actually my um, focus group. I haven't shown this before, um, but I'll get to it in a moment. But um, yeah, I just wanted, yeah, so I've always been driven in my personal practice to create space for artists um, and to look at new ways to contextualise and communicate their work. Um, I've been at West Space for eight months and Amelia was very humble before, she was the director before me. Um, and um, before West Space, I was a curator at a university art museum in Adelaide, the Samstag Museum of Art. And the nature of university art museums is that you work on projects for three years, two, three years, um, and it's quite, um, I guess, mm, th there's a lot of structure around the way that um, the uh, program operates um, and you know you're beholden to the university um, and so I've always wanted to be a bit more um, you know I've had this drive in me to be a bit more responsive and um, deliver urgent projects alongside that of course it's wonderful to have the budget of a university art museum um, and the kind of audiences and beautiful spaces but also you know it's been in me to want to like um, be with artists who are making work right now that are responsive to what's going on right now. Um, so alongside my institutional practice, um, I started um, Fine Print Magazine, which is a um, started as an arts writing um, platform and then kind of developed into a, um, a digital commissioning space and um, a space where we commissioned performance and responses to works of art to kind of enliven um, works of art and um, give them a bit more um, different ways to approach the work, I guess. So anyway, all of that is to say I've kind of had this, um, yeah, institutional side of my work and then also this like um, more, more um, grassroots DIY side. Um, so I think I've kind of brought the two together now that I work at West Space. Um, and, you know, that's really, I understand that the arts is about community and it's about making connections and coming together in space um, to, to talk. And we know that, um, you know, the, the art, um, art galleries are one of the few spaces that we can um, meet and um, without having to spend any money. Like we, we can go to art galleries usually for free. Um, and so they're really spaces for us, these kind of social spaces. Um, so yeah, I, so to just um, kind of introduce West Space and how we work, if you're not familiar with us, um, it's a contemporary visual arts organisation that, yeah, started um, as an arts-run initiative by artists um, in a above a fish and chip shop in Footscray in Melbourne's West in 1993. And now, 30 years later, um, we are the leading in, um, independent, not-for-profit, um, contemporary visual arts organisation in the inner north of Melbourne. So we've had five different locations, and that's one of the beauties of a, um, an, a small um artist-run initiative is that you can be nimble and responsive. And so we've moved from the city, from Footscray to the city and now to Collingwood. Um, and yeah, so we kind of still maintain our artist-led ethos, but now we kind of straddle the world of RE um, with its flexibility and then a pro more professionalised small to medium organisation with the kind of reputation, networks, resources of a larger organisation. And that's kind of brings me to this illustration, which is a bit of a work in progress that I started um, uh, when I, yeah, because I really just wanted like a, an infographic to show where we sit in the ecology. It's kind of hard to explain how we're different um, and how we operate. Um, well, you can explain it in many words, but I was like, how do we just make this look really clear in one image? So you can see here that West Space, um, oh yeah, so we kind of framed it as the artist's journey, which of course is quite reductive. Not every artist's journey is the same. Not every artist wants the same outcomes from their work, but it's kind of, you know, follows this path of like, you know, you might start um, presenting your work in artist-run initiatives and what's the benefit of that? There's, I don't know if you can read that, but it says community there. Um, and then you move to, maybe you show your work next at West Space. Um, and within West Space, there's still a community, but you can also be connected to festivals. You can have a um, bit more media coverage, maybe. Uh, maybe it leads you to commercial representation. Um, and then to show at the, what we call the small to medium, which in, if we're thinking about Melbourne is more, um, you know, Gertrude and Acker, those kind of um, bigger, slightly bigger galleries. Um, and then, you know, there's the state galleries, university art museums, and this isn't a kind of 
it's all interconnected, of course. It's not a one and then the other. Um, but it kind of shows how you can kind of broaden out and move around. And then, you know, maybe you become an international art star out there. Um, and then you bring those ideas back to, um, to Australia. Um, so, yeah, so that's, anyway, that's a bit of a, an experiment. Um, and here is, here's our current site. So I guess, um, actually, I'll just uh, mention um, while we are, as we're 30 years old now, I've been kind of reflecting on the kind of some key moments in our history um, that have shaped how we operate now and what might lead us next. Um, and those kind of two key moments are in 2017, after three years of actively commissioning new work, we became one of the first, we'll still call it an artist-run initiative, although now there's paid staff, um, became the first RE to um, pay artists for every single show. So um, that was, yeah, quite an important step and, yeah, kind of lead the way in, in terms of ARIs now. There are many that are able to do that now. Um, and then I think the second one is actually our move to Collingwood Yards. Um, because now we're surrounded by lots of other artists. There's artist studios there. If you're not familiar, it's a multi-arts precinct that opened um, end of 2019. Great time for things to open. Um, and, you know, we're surrounded by um, artist studios above us and lots of small organisations who, you know, none of us have many resources, either human or financial resources, but we can be there together and we can support each other through talking about projects or um, actually connecting our artists with um, different practitioners. So this, uh, what we're looking at here is um, a, an exhibition by um, Victoria Pham and Joel Spring, who are two artists who had never worked together before. They um, applied for our commission series to collaborate for the first time and we connected them to Liquid Architecture, um, which is an um, experimental um, sound um, organisation, that's kind of their main thing, they do lots of different um, kind of performative ways of presenting work, um, and Centre for Projection Art, who obviously um, work with projections. Um, and so they, the artists learned how to projection map for the first time, there was this amazing booming soundtrack, we pr presented this public program, um, you know, we're always thinking about new ways to um, engage our audiences and um, open up multi-faceted um, entry points, I guess. Um, so this was a, a night where we brought in musicians and, um, and poets to respond to the work, um, which was really beautiful. Um, and I've gone off my notes and now where am I? Um, I just, <laughs> um, oh yeah, I thought I'd just kind of give the context of like what we present in one year because it kind of helps you to kind of think about um, how you might get involved or like, you know, what, yeah, I guess the framework. So within one year, we present five exhibitions in our main gallery space, which is what you're looking at here. So within that, there, well, five to six. At the moment, that's um, two commissions which come to us through an EOI process. Um, which is really important to us to maintain that open call because it means that there are voices out there that we suddenly know about. And even if you're not one of the two that are selected, you know, that's not many in a year, but at least our curatorial team will know about your work. Um, and it provides, you know, the opportunity to make space for new perspectives. Uh, two kind of partnership-based exhibitions where we're working with other organisations to present new work. That just really helps us um, working with a small budget. Um, and then one curatorial project, which might be curated in-house or it might be offering opportunity to a, an emerging curator. We have 10 presentations in our, what we call our micro project space. Um, the West Space window, which is a, um, as it sounds, um, a window space, which is interesting in that it allows artists, more emerging artists to present to think about visibility, because it's visible, it's viewable during all open hours, so you can go to the bar downstairs and go up and look at the work, um, and, and scale. So I think that's the, the most successful works in there are really thinking about how to um, present their work in that, within the limitations of a small space. It's quite um, juicy. Um, we also have an online um, component offsite, which was born out of um, necessity during the lockdowns. Um, it houses, um, yeah, lots of um, kind of contextualising um, works of art through um, critical writing, experimental writing, poetry, digital commissions, um, suite of public programs. 
um, to connect audiences in different ways, as I mentioned. Um, we have, we mentor artists um, and yeah. So really for early career artists, it's kind of, where space is, um, is like a training ground, I guess. We really support artists through the development and the presentation and then the communication to audiences of their work. So often it's an artist's first major gallery presentation and um, through working with us they kind of learn all the different elements that go along with that and how to um, how to work with curators how to um, then think about context and art, um, audiences and then really sets them up to be able to show at a you know like that trajectory before sets them up to be able to work with the state gallery and know what's um, works and what doesn't um, and yeah look I might leave it there I feel like I've been talking a while um, well yeah yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I love that you've selected this image to share with us. And I think it's an incredible um, underscoring of community and Collingwood Yards and potential and cross-pollination of ideas and people and practices, which may not have happened had West Bay stayed in its books. Burke Street location, which was, for those who ever visited, was very beautiful but very isolated. It was hard to even find your way in. You had to kind of be in the know to even yeah. enter into the building. And this is just a model that's far more accessible. Um, so, yeah, incredible image to share with us. Thank you. Um, Jack, I'll hand over to you. I think it's great I come after you because we feel that first bubble. Um, we are the little Ari, the little community Ari. Um, as stated, we um, were very lucky to have been gifted the opportunity to run this, this space thanks to La Trobe University. Kylie's here, she's on our board. And Felicity was very instrumental sitting in the front there in initiating the space. Um, we are a smallish group. I think there's about seven or eight of us at the moment who are all here and I'm speaking on behalf of everyone. Um, we are a student-run space. We were initially for students, but we're hoping to broaden their opportunity out to everybody here. So um, we're called Rookie Ari. We're in the Hargraves Mall. We've been running now for about 18 months, I think. Um, we're a little bit unique in that we run a non-hierarchical system. So we are actually a collaborative space uh, in, in the back office as well as in the front office. So we're really... <laughs> focused on helping artists develop uh, their ideas, helping them understand what it takes to be in a gallery space, understanding what it takes to install work, and we collaborate across everything when artists come to us. So we've had a few solo exhibitions and a few group exhibitions as well. Uh, what else can I say? <laughs> uh, me personally, uh, as I spoke earlier, I came to art later in life and a little bit like Manal, I came from a retail background. So I bring a lot of that knowledge into the, into the space, which has helped sort of direct how we go about what we're doing and, and helping us find our space within the city. And it was really um, heartening for us all. We all got excited before when everyone said, oh, what about Ari's in Bendigo? So... Um, do follow us because we do have big plans. We're a very ambitious group. So there is um, plans for us to expand our offering in the future. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, Jack, I'm thinking what models of ARIAs did you eight look at when you were setting up Rookie? Were there other, um, other st models in other states or other cities that you looked at for inspiration in terms of their structure and governance? That's a good question. I'm originally from Melbourne um, and I grew up, uh, spent most of my childhood in the CBD and like you I had an NGV experience uh, looking at a Jeffrey Smart painting actually, Cahill Underpass. Um, and from there I kind of just continued on so I was had the opportunity to visit a lot of different art spaces growing up and, and through, I went to the TAFE and then through TAFE I really got familiar with a lot of different spaces. West Space is one of the ones that I went to, bus projects um, and art, uh, artist run spaces that I did have a lot to do with was Brunswick Street, Street Gallery. Um, they were fantastic in helping me get that experience. I used to volunteer and hang work there so I had a, um, a good grounding. Um, I also actually initiated my own project as part of a space activation. Um, it was sort of a state government, local government. So I opened a studio space and 
kind of became a collaborative project. I had musicians, poets, other artists come in. We used to do happenings and it used to get pretty groovy. Um, so when I moved to Bendigo, it was kind of in my ambition that I wanted to have a go at doing that again. Yeah. Um, across each of your presentations, um, I keep hearing the words community and collaboration come up. Would anyone like to speak to how they find ways to collaborate. It's not always easy, but if anyone would like to take that juicy question and run with it. I think it's the joke. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what you're saying before, I'll take that as a starting point around um, West Space being located within a multi-arts precinct. I mean, when I worked at Samstag, for example, we would always talk about collaborating with other, with other organisations or um, bringing artists in more frequently to kind of, yeah, just to talk. And I guess, yeah, this idea of the word collaboration, um, of, we often think about that with an endpoint to it. Like a, um, But I think it's good to think about it as a process. It's about um, sharing skills and knowledge and that going kind of back and forth without anyone being the teacher. You know, you're like, um, you, we've all got things to learn from each other. Um, so, yeah, wanting to kind of create space to have those conversations that are less transactional and more just, yeah, sharing knowledge and skills. Those kinds of things you talk about in bigger institutions and no one has any time because there are so many emails. <laughs> um, but, you know, being, being um, somewhere like Collingwood Yards where you're actually just like thrust into this like um, community, it's almost like a co-op or a, a campus or something. Um, and, yeah, I think that's helped us, you know, we bump into each other in the halls. We have coffee in the courtyard. Um, but I think, you know, when I eventually move on from West Base, I want to take that way of working with me because, yeah, as I said, like, I really think that we need to rely on each other to get through because there's so much, you know, it's a hard <laughs> sector to be in. Um, we all love it. But, um, yeah, working together is the way to kind of, yeah, be able to do it well, I think. Um, that was a really roundabout answer I'm trying to think what my point was um I think just yeah how yeah how do we do it <laughs> was the question wasn't it and then I don't know if I answered it <laughs> yeah you don't yeah and I, okay so yeah I guess my point is not necessarily having an outcome just like having those conversations for the sake, sake of having them and then they might lead to an exhibition or a new um, artwork or like a formal collaboration that you present but it's okay if they don't and to yeah to really just focus on that sharing. Mm. Mm. Can I? Yes, please. I think um, when I moved to Newstead, a, a very small rural town, I, I think it, it just begins with a simple conversation. Mm. It begins with uh, local media productions, like um, we have a local Echo, which is a, a weekly newsletter that comes out in town, um, local newspapers, and approaching uh, uh, groups, local groups, and just introducing yourself, introducing yourself to local artists that are perhaps doing something that resonates with you or is similar to your own practice. Um, and actually just having that conversation, um, that um, collaboration comes from those very simple conversations. Mm -hmm. and. Through the week, I spoke to one of the, the founders of Castlemaine Press, and the, ho the whole genesis of the, uh, or the beginnings um, didn't start in 2014. There was about six years of conversations through a loosely affiliated group of artists that just sat around and actually talked. I mean, you know, there's a lot more in that. There's, um, you know, you can share all sorts of things about your work. There's you know, creative ideas getting thrown back and forwards, but, um, you know, this idea of coming to community workspaces, it's just so fulfilling, but that it d does take time and it does often start with a simple conversation and just engaging with other people that are doing similar work to, to you. Mm. I am also thinking of the differences and parallels between Collingwood Yards and somewhere like Lot 19, where you were also up against artist studios and um, a different kind of infrastructure in which you're housed. Um, how, what is that experience like? Do you find there's moments for collaborations with studio artists? Is that something you're interested in? Well, I think 
I think when Castlemaine Press came to Lot 19, it gave it a much more dynamic sort of energy. I can, I've got a little bit here that I can just read about the press. Um, Castlemaine Press is a great example of what artists can do when they come together with shared purpose in a collaborative print workshop. Uh, set in the beautiful grounds of the Lot 19 art space in Castlemaine, Victoria. Um, just backtracking, Lot 19 was founded by Mark Anstey. Uh, who purchased the land in 2001 and over 20 years he has built studios, gallery stages and other structures, funding the establishment through his own creative work. So he's a, he's a philanthropist in that, in that sense. Um, uh, a furniture maker actually was how, how he, he, he um, funded the beginnings of the, the Lot 19. He designed, funded and ran the multi-platform arts program for the next 15 years, engaging what worked um, and improving and experimenting. Mark has recently appointed a board of directors who will eventually inherit the not-for-profit community that holds artists at its heart. But initially it did start off with individual artist studios and then after years of talking about beginning um, the beginnings of Castlemaine Press, uh, the founding members approached Mark Anstey and just said, we want to put in, you know, a community press. And he said, I will build you one. Mm -hmm. And within that year, a slab had been laid because he knew the advantage of, you know, creating this vibrant um, energy and bringing that to Lot 19. That, you know, we'll, it works differently when there's community spaces there that are available. And they mm -hmm. now have a fantastic sculpture um, uh, place that uh, they do a lot of work for Melbourne Museum there. Castlemaine Clay is located there and also Castlemaine Press mm. along with a, a great gallery and um, they, ha they hold the annual sculpture prize. So, you know, in all it's, it's a fantastic, mm. vibrant place. Um, and I'm not sure it would, you know, Castlemaine is just the place for this. It's mm. nurtured and the press even, Castlemaine Press when it began, like it was, it was, it really was that idea of fake it until you make it because people got together and they went to the community and said, this is what we want to do. And the slab hadn't even been um, poured and they, they gleaned membership because Castlemaine just has this wonderful artistic mm. energy and, you know, philanthropic kind of aesthetic. So they got, they got loads of members to start funding mm. and also had, ran a, um, an auction at Castlemaine Art Museum mm. which um, started to build funds for the press itself. Mm. So, yeah, fantastic space. Yeah, yeah. and thank you for drawing attention to funding because that's such an important part of all these questions and all these spaces and it's going to be um, the focus of our final session um, but what I'm hearing and what I from what I know from lot 19 you know it's got a very DIY self-funded self-initiated feeling it's really one person's vision that's then been transformed by a community and everyone's put in their own time and their own resources and in some cases their own money to make it happen continue to do so exactly and volunteer um labor volunteer contribution also underscores places like rookie and places like west space but there's also many other levels of um, financial input that take a lot of um, time and a lot of different processes of negotiation and um, i wonder jack if you'd like to talk a little bit about how that eventuates in rookie the the relationships with council um, whether you're funded whether you hope to be funded in the future what it's like working um, locally in regards to funding sure um, we are very much reliant on our volunteer time we volunteer our equipment we volunteer our skills and we do sometimes put in cash when's ne when it's needed so a little bit like lot 19 um, it's very self-funded we uh, are, the space is provided in kind by the council which has been fabulous we are renegotiating our contracts at the moment so we're currently off-site but we still operate which is really important 
Um, we are hoping to secure funding in the future. We have recently put in a funding application and we're hoping to continue and, and uh, through expanding our program then be available to access more funding as well because often funding is very tied to what you do and how you do it. Um, and also coming into that, I guess, is that whole conversation about being incorporated and not-for-profit, which are all things that we've been negotiating over the last few months. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it, you can do it. it you know, it, it, it can be intensive. Because we were all students last year, all of us were studying, it can get a little overwhelming at times, especially trying to um, put projects through and, oh, we need this equipment and who's got that. Um, but I think it's also important from our perspective to highlight that the artists who contributed to our program are also volunteering their time. Yeah, and. I think uh, for these kind of entry level ARIs, it is very much a community atmosphere. Yeah, but it's also a really vital uh, starting point and it's also really vital to have that energy. You know, what we provide, uh, I think, for, for the Bendigo art scene is a huge amount of energy and, and passion. And yeah, that's something that is really important. Um, and that creates a very interesting contrast to a space such as West Base where it took just 25 years to be able to pay artists, you know, <laughs> just that short quarter of a century. Um, you know, it's in it for the long game and, um, you know, a huge achievement in 2017 um, that has been maintained by the current team against all odds in a way, like really committing to not going backwards. Um, I know all about West Space's funding structures. Would you like to share a little about it with our audience? Yes, a uh, pain point. Um, yeah, well, I mean, when West Bay started, of course, as an artist-run initiative, we were run entirely by volunteers and then, of course, incorporated somewhere along the way. And now, just to let you know, you know, how we... Um, it works. Um, so I'm full time. We've got a part time curator, a part time administrator, so three of us. And then we do still have a cohort of volunteers. Um, and then the way that that is funded, and then the way our program is funded, it's kind of in three parts. So we have like one third of it is um, government funding through the Australia Council, um, which we currently don't have. So that's fun. Um, the second is uh, state um, funding, which we do have. We're on multi-year funding from Creative Victoria. And then the third is kind of made up of uh, project, um, project funding. So we go for um, small um, pockets of money from, from the federal and state and then also um, philanthropic funds and then, um, you know, uh, donors um, who very generously um, give us some funds and um, yeah and and the council actually the local um, council city of Yarra supports the West Space window for example um, yeah so it's without having a kind of greater um, support framework um, it's a hustle we're constantly applying for grants and that's why that those like operational multi-year funding um, streams are so important because it gives us a little break where we can actually do the work um, and relying on project funding each year, which is kind of what we're doing, um, is really quite exhausting and but that's okay, that's what we're doing, that's the work that we do and um, it, yeah, as you say, Amelia, it allows us to keep going forward and um, the, the kind of key thing that we hold on to is that we pay our artists. So if we have to reduce our program somewhat due to the current funding landscape, that's okay as long as we put in the work to um, really invest in those artists to present their work. There may be fewer opportunities but those artists that are being showing with us are going to have um, the full support of our team and, you know, being able to present a really fantastic exhibition. So, yeah, that's the funding landscape. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And it's a difficult terrain um, to navigate, of course, because, um, you know, so much work that goes into applying for funding, but that funding is what supports the full-time staff. It's yeah. a, there could be another diagram, actually, which is just yeah. a circle. <laughs> feeding into each other. Um, but I think that, uh, yeah, that, that drive forwards comes across really, really clearly with West Space and this, um, you know, support comes in all different ways, doesn't it? Support for artists and um, it doesn't 
uh, yeah, have to be volume of opportunities. Actually, it can be about kind of the integrity of an opportunity or the focus of an opportunity. Um, we're going to open up for audience questions in just a minute, but I thought I would just ask one more about longevity. Um, and maybe, Chrisanne, you might like to speak, you might like to begin about uh, answering this idea of longevity. How important is it that places such as Castle Main Press stay? Or is it okay if places are transient and they come and go? Or do you see Castle Main Press as something that needs to remain into the future? Uh, definitely. I, I think uh, it's, it's crucial that it, that it does remain. And it's crucial that you know, there is always a proactive group of, of volunteers to run it because these sort of communi community places are becoming more and more important, you know, as we hurtle towards Armageddon. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes the world can seem broken and quite unfixable. Mm. The importance of these community spaces where people can uh, leave their busy traumatised world at the door and come in and make art in a, in a supportive and light-filled space is absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I would say that the, the longevity... And look, we all know the weight of mental health mm -hmm. and, and what, how, you know, the weight of that that is carried in communities. These spaces are becoming more and more Im important. Mm -hmm. So... My, yeah, my answer is crucial, crucial that they go on into the future. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Thank you. And you paint a picture of um, uh, a landscape where yeah, this occupies a vital place, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the same people carrying it on. That people might um, change over, new yeah. volunteers might come. Exactly. exactly, it's not the weight of one individual responsibility, and that is true of West Space. And Rookie is very much, you know, it's at its beginning. It's at the precipice. So. What would you like to comment on longevity for Rookie, or is it yeah. too early? <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, we're a very ambitious group. So, <laughs> um, and also we're very passionate about uh, providing an access point for local artists, uh, not just local but emerging, and people who are doing experimental art. Um, there really isn't a lot locally for that experimental group, and just to try ideas and to test um, new projects. I think it's really important to have those kind of spaces, um, and. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's interesting with the whole conversation that's been going today and talking about commercial spaces and art, artist representation, that you really need that entry point. Um, you really need that space to get that access. And growing up and living in Melbourne I, and moving here, I can really see how that's really fed my art practice and how important that is, yeah, yeah for me as an artist. Maybe when we open up to questions, can we go back to Joanna's previous slide? I think that's a good... Um, might just trigger some questions for people. Um, we have uh, 15 minutes and I'd love to open up the floor if we have any questions for our panellists. Oh, we're opening that. Okay, and you're going to have... Yes, that one. Okay, great. Do we have any, any questions around how these spaces begun? What... And this is a place we can test out any... Oh, there we go. Thank you. Just a quick one. Uh, <coughs> Will an ARI include a, a studio space as well for anyone on the panel? Or is it a totally separate mm. concept? <laughs> Do you mean as in along as the ARI as, as as in having a studio space? As in being studio spaces or having Does the concept of an ARI include a space where artists can work in as well, or are they totally separate concept? Yes. Do you, want to, yeah. do you want to expand on that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot. There's quite a few models where that is the case, um, where there's an exhibition space, but then also um, connected to studio spaces. There, yeah. Um, and I think that kind of cross pollination of ideas and being able to be in the space together and test out your ideas and then bring them, you know, perhaps to the front space where this um, where the gallery is, is really important. And you do see that a lot. Um, yeah. Makes me think of maybe what West Best did last week. I'm just going off social media oh. here, but handing over the gallery to artists yes. for short times. 
<laughs> Thanks, Amelia. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, before thinking, um, I was kind of talking about how we see West Space as a space for um, experimentation, risk taking, innovation in practice um, within a framework of support by our team. Um, and that occurs in the, you know, beautiful um, slick presentations that we do, but also, as Amelia was referencing last week, um, one of the beauties of being in Collingwood Yards is, um, as I said, we're being, we're connected to, um, to so many other small um, organisations and we worked with um, Centre for Projection Art, which is another very small, you know, couple of people run that um, organisation, um, and they have um, resident artists, so there were six artists that had been artists in residence at Centre for Projection Art for six months, and we opened up West Space as a kind of gallery as studio for the last two weeks. So they kind of came in, they they were re really experimenting with the materiality of their projections. So they were um, mapping over the windows or they're projecting on the floor or the ceiling or projecting on mirrors on the walls, like, you know, just testing out those ideas um, without the pressure of a finished install at the end, without the pressure of, um, you know, having a fully realised project at the end. So that was actually really generative. And yesterday we held... Um, a series of crit sessions, so we brought industry peers, other artists, moving image based artists and um, practitioners to come in and um, look at the work one by one and um, have a really open dialogue about that work. It wasn't, you know, recognising it was work in progress, it wasn't a finished work. So yeah, so that kind of, um, that space of uh, process and testing was, yeah, I think it's so important. Um, yeah, and I feel, you know, West Space can provide that. Thank you. Uh, any other questions in the audience? I'm curious what people um, think of this trajectory. <laughs> it's not the one part. It's, just it's um, great, and though. In fact, I haven't shown this to anyone yet, you know, as I said, so um, there might be, you know, suggest some changes if you want. <laughs> I think it's great. It's, yeah. I wonder. You all, it's almost would be interesting to have arrows going back the other way, wouldn't well, it? Well, I think as that, well? Was, that was actually, oh yeah, that is actually what I was wanting. Um, the designer, so I've been, I showed the designer this like really scrappy um, <laughs> series of drawings on a piece of paper and was like, make that into something. Yeah. Um, and that's what I kind of wanted to show that, mm. yeah, you don't necessarily go from one to the other, but you can move back and forth, you can go yeah. around, they are all kind of connected. But it's good to, especially when you're an artist pitching to an, um, a, or thinking about where you want to show your work next, it's good to think about what that particular space um, does and the, the kind of space in the ecology that it occupies because it, um, you know, the, the kind of, the way that they think about their, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, yeah, important to kind of recognise the context within which you're wanting to present your work. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why I wanted to make this, to show, um, you know, what those different spaces might be able to offer you, you know. Um, we can't necessarily offer the same things as the state galleries, but we can provide community and a space to test things. And, yeah, um, they all kind of do slightly different things and, yeah. And it yeah. also makes me think of, um, you know, artists with a commercial practice or representation who love to show in an ARI, for instance, yeah. because it's liberating and it's freeing and there's an opportunity for experimentation that they might not have with their gallery. Um, you know, and you could see the same logic applying, you know, moving from a university art museum, perhaps, where then someone might be exhibiting at La Trobe Art Institute, mm -hmm. um, but then also have a presentation at West Base where they can really um, exp explore collaboration or work with um, another discipline or take their practice in a new direction. A question, thank you. Um, it's maybe an observation as well, because I think it's interesting you've got festivals in there and it's spaces that aren't gallery spaces that people are actually really activating and also um, outdoor spaces. And so there's some infrastructure and things that are a part of cities. And this was, I was getting involved in this as um, the creative industries officer, looking for um, spaces where you can showcase work, but it's not a gallery space. So that might be an interesting um, opportunity to add into that. And I think the festivals is really um, a great place. So I was interested in what festivals West Space um, are involved in. Mm. 
Yeah, we're always trying to partner with festivals as it's a really good way, you know, we don't, to, for us to, um, for visibility for us and also, of course, the funding that a festival sometimes can provide. Um, uh, yeah, what uh, we're uh, taken part in Photo Festival, which is a relatively new initiative focused on moving image and um, photographic based practice. Um, oh my God, why am I just completely blanking on festivals? Yes, Footscray's fest, re, uh, recent festival, Neighbourhood, um, which looked at communities, but also, um, I guess, gentrification stories. Um, yeah, uh, Rising Festival, which is on at the moment. Um, oh my gosh, so many, really. But um, I, yeah, I guess, um, oh, sorry, you're speaking about um, kind of spaces that are not just gallery spaces. I think that's a really important point. And I think that, you know, we're talking about funding before and the current funding landscape is quite tough. There's a lot less money in the kitties of um, state and federal governments. So if we're talking about ARIs they, or artist run initiatives, they don't always have to be connected to spaces or bricks and mortar. I think that the, the kind of next little while is actually gonna be um, exploring that generative space of pop-ups or, um, you know, outdoor, um, um, you know, um, innovations like that and um, collaborating with other organisations to put something on, you know, we need to kind of think a bit beyond like just having the, um, being tethered to one space and yeah, being being a bit more nimble in that way. I guess this also speaks to longevity, you know, a, a gallery doesn't need to stay the same year in, year out. I think we need to be really responsive to the climate and these, these are things that Westspace is thinking about um, at the moment, so yeah. Thank you. We have another question up the back. Uh, I have a question. Um, it, it might already exist. I'm still navigating the landscape and identifying opportunities. I'm curious as to whether there's any events or opportunities that are interactive like today that focus on... I guess, um, opportunities for artists who want to either start an artist-run initiative or uh, connect with other people to find these sideways opportunities we're kind of talking about that might not be formally artist-run initiatives where, you know, they go through the incorporation process and all, all those governance things. Just wondering, yeah, if there's any, like, structured opportunities for artists to gather and have these conversations in a similar way as to today, because it sounds like there's um, some quite, there, there's some amazing resources out there about um, traditional processes and ways to establish artist run initiatives, um, like on the Nava site and things like this. But the, the change seems to happen when people have the opportunity to gather together and consider the ideas together in person and have the conversations in person. So it feels more possible just wondering if there's anything out there I'm not aware of. And if not, if there's any opportunity for perhaps some of us in this room to get together to apply for funding for that to happen somehow, because it sounds like there's a real need. Like networking for wannabe ARI members. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can talk directly to that. Um, before we had to have our pause on site, we did launch Creative Commons that is exactly what you're talking about. So that's about people who are interested in art spaces or art projects that are specifically more visual arts focused, obviously. Um, but we can talk across all disciplines about just getting together and testing those ideas and workshopping those ideas um, in a collaborative and supportive environment. I think the thing that really sets Rookie apart is that we are collaborative, supportive, and we uh, we have a strict no competition. You know, we don't compete against each other. And I think that that's something that's quite missing in mm -hmm. some of the, you know, as you get higher up, it becomes more and more competitive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, rookie. <laughs> We're hoping to, to be able to get that back up and running soon. Yeah. So, we should look for Creative Commons? Uh, no, rookie. So, it's R-O-O-K-I-E dot A-R-I, and we have an Instagram page, and you can follow us and message us there, and, yeah, we'll um, get back to you. I just also want to jump in. I might come on. I'm just going to head back here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I just also want to answer that. Just like, um, yeah, add to um, the...
the offer, really. Um, a day like today is really um, a sensing what the um, climate is and the response to a day like today, um, you know, shows that there is a desire and a need and an enthusiasm around this kind of thing. So um, we would see our role in that as providing space for gathering and discussion. Um, free of course um, so you know let us know but also providing advice and connecting you with um, some of the wonderful people that have been on panels today you know from the council and from the university and with curators and other ARIs and commercials like you know those sorts of to get a sense of you know how it all works and of course um, connecting you with resources like through NAVA and some of the other like Creative Vic and Regional Arts Vic so you know we'd really see that as our role to local artists as providing some of that space and advice and sort of yeah just connecting you up yeah um, final question thank you hi jack um i just wondered so is rookie available to all local artists to show at or is it just students from latrobe uh last year we were just based uh, for students. So at the moment, our st we are still student focused, um, but we do have ambitions to work and expand those projects too, which is what we're doing through Creative Commons, is sort of getting a, a, a taste for what's out there and what people are interested in and how we might progress in the future. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like we are right on time. Um, Thank you. Please join me in thanking our panellists.